How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is topic 7.1, Le Chatelier's Principle, part number two. If you didn't watch the first, highly recommend going and watching that before you watch this one. Let's go. All right, Le Chatelier's Principle, part B. We look at some more applications of LCP, this time looking at temperature and pressure and inert gases. The IB understandings and applications are the same as last time. It basically focuses on application of Le Chatelier's principle. So a change in volume of a reaction vessel or an increase in volume of an aqueous solution, that can affect the equilibrium constant. Likewise, a change in pressure can affect the position of equilibrium on a mixture of gases. So if we have a gas equilibrium mixture, there's a couple of things we could do. We could increase the volume, which decreases the pressure. So an increase in volume is a decrease in pressure because those are proportional relationships. Now what will happen if we decrease the pressure is the system will want to try and increase the pressure. It wants to partially oppose that stress. In a pressure situation, it's going to try and shift to the side of the reaction with more numbers of particles or more moles. So we want to look at the stoichiometric coefficients to determine which side has the greater number of particles or the greater number of moles. If we have a decrease in volume, which is an increase in pressure due to the proportional relationship, the system is going to want to try and adjust to decrease the pressure. Now the only way the system can decrease the pressure is by shifting to the side with the least number of particles or the least number of moles. So when we're dealing with pressures for gases, we're looking at how the reaction is going to shift according to the number of particles. Now if we have a solution, we're looking at a dilution, an increase in water or an increase in volume. Most of the time we can't decrease the volume in a solution, so we'll just stick with an increase. Now this has the same effect as an increase in volume of a gas. So it's going to shift to the side with the most number of ions in this case, or the most number of moles. So it's going to shift to that side to try and increase the concentration. Changes in pressure, they don't affect systems in equilibrium that are solutions or solids. So just look out for that little trick. So when we've got a change in pressure of a gas, so when a gaseous system at equilibrium is exposed to a stress of an increase or decrease in pressure, the system wants to partially oppose that. So an increase in pressure favours the net reaction that decreases the total number of gas moles. So in this reaction we have 2 moles on the left and 3 moles on the right. So if we increase the pressure of this system, the system's going to want to move to the side with the least number of moles, which means we're going to get a net reverse reaction, or it's going to start to shift to the left. So the water side would be favoured because it has least a less number of molecules than the side on the right. If we would decrease the pressure, or increase the volume, that favours the net reaction that has a total number of moles that is greater. So in this one, we have 9 moles of gas on the left and 10 moles of gas on the right. So if we decrease the pressure of this system, it's going to want to shift to the right to try and increase the pressure of the system. So we would get a net forward reaction in that case. If we have a gas assist, an equilibrium system for a gas that has no change in moles on either side, so in this one we have 2 on the left and 2 on the right, then a change in pressure will not change the equilibrium constant. It will have no effect. So a change in pressure has no effect on a system that has the same number of moles on both sides. So let's have a look at an example. We've touched on N2O4 and NO2 before. The N2O4 is colourless and the NO2 is brown. Imagine it's in a syringe with a movable piston so we can increase the pressure by pushing down on the piston. So what is our stress? Well, our stress is an increase in pressure. We've decreased the volume, so it's an increase in pressure. What does the system want to do? Well, the system wants to shift to partially oppose the increase in pressure by trying to decrease the pressure. Now, because this is an equilibrium system, the only thing that this equilibrium can do is either shift to the left or shift to the right to balance out that equilibrium. So it's going to shift to the side which starts to reduce the pressure. In this case, we have one mole of gas on the left 
and two moles of gas on the right. So the system is going to shift to decrease the pressure by shifting to the side with the least number of particles. This time that is the left hand side. So we're going to see a net reverse reaction occur which is the formation of N2O4. So a net reverse reaction is going to occur and like in the other video if you use that term a net reverse reaction occurs you should always write that equation. So in this case it would be 2NO2 gas going to 1N2O4. We may be asked to draw a concentration versus time graph for a system where we have a change in pressure. So again, I'm just going to start off with our equilibrium with our two gases in, equal, in equilibrium. Their concentrations aren't changing. Their concentrations, I've just made them up. Now, if we see an increase in pressure, we will have a spike in the concentration and it will be a spike on both of them. So whenever you see a spike in the graph for both of the reactants, you can be sure that there's been a change in pressure. A change in pressure, an increase in pressure, well that's a decrease in volume, so the concentrations both go up. Then as the system starts to adjust, the NO2 started decreasing, it only partially opposed so it never got back to what it was initially, and the N2O4, well it started to increase. Again, we just need to take care with the factors. One will decrease by double the amount, the other will increase. So here is another example, this time using oxygen and sulfur dioxide with sulfur trioxide. We've got this system at equilibrium. Predict the effect on the position of equilibrium to the system if the pressure is increased. So the stress. The stress is an increase in pressure. What does Le Chatelier's principle say? Well, the system will shift to oppose or partially oppose the increase in pressure by trying to decrease the pressure. So the only way this system can decrease the pressure is by moving to the side with the least number of gas molecules. In this case, on the left hand side we have 3 moles of gas and on the right hand side we have 2 moles of gas. So this system is going to want to shift to the side with the least number of moles, which in this case is the right hand side, so we're going to get a net forward reaction. Again, if you say the words net forward reaction in a response, I suggest that you write down the equation. So the equation here would be oxygen gas plus sulfur dioxide gas forming sulfur trioxide. In terms of our graph, we might be asked to draw in the concentrations. Now again, if we've increased the pressure, we've decreased the volume and the concentrations will increase proportional to how much there was at the start. So we're going to see a spike up in all of the concentrations of oxygen, sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. When the system tries to balance out the equilibrium, it's going to start to shift and we're going to start to see the net forward reaction take over. So what's going to happen is the oxygen is going to start to decrease by a factor of x, the SO2 is going to decrease by a factor of 2x, I know my drawing's not very good there but it will, and then the SO3 is going to increase by a concentration of 2x. So it's proportional to its coefficients. Okay, if we have a change in temperature, a change in temperature is also a stress on an equilibrium system. Now, a change in concentration, pressure or volume, it alters the position of equilibrium, but it doesn't change the K value because K is a constant. Changing the temperature actually has an impact on the K value. So the formation of NO2 from N2O4 is endothermic. So we can rewrite this equation to have energy on the reactant side. If we have an endothermic reaction, energy will be on the reactant side. Then we can deal with the temperature as being like an increase in energy. And we deal with it the exact same way we dealt with changes in concentration or changes in pressure. If we increase the temperature, what, will, what effect will this have on the K value of the reaction? Okay, well the stress is an increase in temperature. The system, according to Le Chatelier's principle, will try to partially oppose the increase in temperature by trying to reduce the temperature. Now the only way this equilibrium system can reduce the temperature is if it removes some of the energy. So the energy can only be removed by N2O4 reacting or absorbing the energy and forming NO2. 
So because the energy is on the left, essentially it's gone up. We want the system wants to partially oppose it, so we must get a net forward reaction to try and remove some of that energy. Again, if we say a net forward reaction, we should write the reaction to show that it's going to go from left to right. So we have N2O4 forming 2NO2. Now what's going to happen to the Kc value? Well, if we write our equilibrium constant, it would be NO2 squared over N2O4. If we're shifting this reaction to the right, we've got a net forward reaction, that means the value that is in NO2 is going to get bigger. And the value that's the denominator, N2O4, is going to get smaller. So we're going to have a bigger number over a smaller number, so the Kc value must increase. So for an endothermic reaction, if we add in energy, the K value goes up. Just another example, explain the effect on the position of equilibrium and the magnitude of the K value when the temperature of the following system is increased. So this time we have an exothermic reaction and we're increasing the temperature. That means energy will be on the product side of this reaction. So if we're increasing the temperature, that's our stress. Our stress is an increase in temperature. How is Le Chatelier's principle going to be applied? Well, the system is going to shift to try and partially oppose the increase in temperature by trying to decrease the temperature. Now, the only way this system can decrease the temperature is if it tries to remove that energy. And removing that energy would mean that the system wants to shift from right to left. So there will be a net reverse reaction occurring. The endothermic reaction is what we want. So we're going to see CO react with H2 in a net reverse reaction to try and remove some of that energy. So the reaction would be CO gas plus 3H2 goes to CH4 plus H2O. In terms of the K value, well, if we write our equilibrium constant, we would have the concentration of CO and H2 to the power of its coefficient over the concentration of CH4 times the concentration of H2O. When we're writing the equilibrium expression, we always write it reading from left to right. And what's going to happen is the numbers at the top are going to get smaller, while the numbers at the bottom are going to get bigger. So we're going to have a smaller number over a bigger number, so that means the Kc value is going to get lower. We can come up with a couple of summaries for an increase and decrease in temperature. If we have an increase in temperature for an exothermic reaction, that's going to decrease the K value. The K value is going to get less. If we have an endothermic reaction and we increase the temperature, the K value is going to go up. Increasing temperatures favor endothermic reactions. If we have a decrease in temperature, an exothermic reaction, the K value goes up. In the endothermic reaction, it goes down. So a decrease in temperature favours an exothermic reaction. It's also possible to change the pressure of a system without changing its volume if we add in a noble gas or an unreactive gas. Now, a noble or inert gas does not affect the position of equilibrium because K is a constant and it's not in the equilibrium mixture, so it won't affect the K value. Okay, topic 7.1, some top tips. Temperature changes the value of Kc. It's temperature dependent. Increasing favors an endo, decreasing favors an exo, and make sure you look at the number of moles of particles to determine which side it will shift if we're looking at a gas system. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.